Howdy folks, I'm Nimble Nihonium, numerously nictitating near nihilistic nibblings. I'm Amber. And here are more nihilistic nibblings for us to blink at, I guess. Because why not? Why not, Amber? Why not? Let's get started. All right, folks, and our first letter is titled, Am I a jerk for telling my coworker that she's a freak for allowing spiders in her bathroom? I'm a 36-year-old female, and I started working for a new company recently. The team is small and fairly close. Tasman, a 33-year-old female, had a birthday yesterday, and she hosted a dinner afterwards. They were going to a pub. I was invited, and it was my first night out with these people. Dinner went smoothly, everyone was lovely. Tasman lives alone in a two-floor Victorian house. No idea how she can afford it, but that's really irrelevant anyways. I only mention it because those houses have more nooks and crannies and spiders are more common. Anyways, her house was absolutely spotless. After a while, I went into the bathroom. Keep in mind that others have been in there before me and no one mentioned anything, so it was a total surprise. I entered and immediately noped out of there. There was a black spider just chilling above the window and another small one above her bathtub. I hate spiders, so I went out and asked if any of the guys could kill the spiders as I couldn't use the bathroom. The first to speak was Tasman and she told me to use the other bathroom if I wanted to but no one would be killing her spiders. I asked if she was serious and she said yes, they don't bite and she doesn't kill spiders and doesn't have the heart to throw them outside in the winter so they're allowed to stay until summer and that she didn't mind. I told her that she was a freak and no one in their right mind keeps wild spiders roaming free in their house. She said suit yourself, you can pee yourself for all I care but the spiders get to stay. I said that was rude and asked if no one cared. Everyone just shrugged their arms and some said it's just a small spider. I asked her again, are you seriously putting spiders above humans? She looked me dead in the eyes and said yes. I asked her, could you be any more of a freak? Yes, she replied, and then she told me to get out of her house. I was fuming, but I did leave. I met with my friends at another pub, and they're split. Some agree that she was a freak, and others told me that I was a jerk for saying it in front of everyone because it may cause problems at work. Now it's Saturday and I don't get to see Tasman until Monday, but I'm worried that I might be the jerk and that she'll report me or something. Was I the jerk? Because if so, I might have some damage control to do and apologize. Am I the jerk? All right, folks, what do you think? Jerk or not the jerk? Yes, I think OP is definitely a jerk here. Now, I understand phobias are a serious thing, but the thing about them is you can't dictate what other people have in their homes. Yeah. Like, if you're afraid of spiders or dogs or any number of animals or even inanimate objects, you can't be like, kill this thing, throw it out, like, get rid of it for me. Now, the host made a perfectly reasonable accommodation. She offered oh, yeah. a secondary bathroom, which presumably was spider free. And so like, that's about the extent of the accommodations. Like it's it's fine to want to be in a separate environment from the thing that's triggering the phobia. Um, and so I think the host was perfectly fine here, but I think Opie's demand that the spiders be killed because she hates them is just not acceptable. And then resorting to name calling when her host doesn't agree is also not acceptable. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people keep spiders and just because OP doesn't necessarily keep spiders because they're afraid of them doesn't mean that everyone else is like that. And I mean, we have spiders roaming around our bathroom at this very moment. <laughs> yeah, and I think that spiders are a pretty natural part of a home. They help to keep the bugs down and they keep unwanted guests out, right? like uh op <laughs> and this is one of those situations where op you're brand new to this place you're trying to make a good impression and then you go ahead and call one of your co-workers a freak i mean op it's just very poor form on top of that i mean while i don't agree with the name calling in general i think that you've especially painted yourself into a corner here with this situation again like amber said you were offered a reasonable accommodation and you should have just taken them up on it and said oh thank you for finding another bathroom for me but let me know what you folks think do you have any pet spiders mm -hmm. anyhow take care and good luck and vt 2022 cam says you're the jerk this is a you problem it's okay to be afraid of spiders but not everyone wants to kill them calling her a freak was out of line if you have a phobia you need to work on it that's not her problem 
And Advanced Promise 718 says, yep, I agree. I'm also a person who will let spiders live in a house. They take care of other pests and remain hidden most of the time. Some people don't like needlessly killing creatures, while other people don't think it's that deep. Either way, it was her house, and you didn't need to escalate it the way you did, especially considering you could have just used the other bathroom. All right, folks, and our next letter is titled, Am I a Jerk for Rejecting My Son? Throw away because my friends are following my mane. Many years ago, I donated eggs to a couple who were my friends at the time. They had been struggling for a couple of years, and the doctor said that she was infertile. We signed the paperwork, and they have another woman carry the pregnancy. The husband is the biological father. They have a son after two rounds of IVF. We stayed friends for a while, and I saw them quite often. After a few years, I moved away to advance my career, and we sort of lost touch. When the boy was around 14, they contacted me to ask for money. I was earning fairly well by then, and they told me that they were struggling. It turns out the woman wasn't completely infertile, and they had another child a couple years before. She decided to be a stay-at-home mom, so money had become tight. They said that I was their son's biological mother, so I had some responsibility, despite the context of his birth. I told them to pound sand and I blocked them. They took me to court and lost because the paperwork was pretty solid. I thought that was the end of it. Well, last week, the kid shows up at my door. He's 18 now, and his parents kicked him out of the house. Before that, however, they told him the story of his conception. They made some convenient adjustments, though. They told them that I had an affair with his father and got pregnant, that I wanted nothing to do with him once the father made it clear that I was just a fling and he wasn't going to give up his marriage for me, that they took him in out of kindness of their heart despite me being a deadbeat mom who never paid child support. Now his sister was growing up and they didn't have enough bedrooms, so they wanted him out of the house. They gave him my address and wished him well. To say I was dumbfounded is an understatement, since he was insisting that I owed him for 18 years of abandonment. I decided to show him the egg donation agreement and the court papers. He started blasting his parents on social media in their family group. They got back to me and called me a jerk for ruining their relationship with their son and their reputation. I told them that they did that all by themselves. Now my mother is calling me a jerk too, saying that I should have taken the kid in, that he had nowhere to go, and he ended up staying with relatives. The thing is that I'm child free by choice, and my mother knows this. I'm an only child, and she feels like this is her only chance to be a grandmother. But if I refuse to accept that he is my son, then she feels that I'm keeping her from having a relationship with him. I told her that she's welcome to contact him and take him in herself, but she says that she's too old. I have a life, I have a career, a husband, and two dogs. There's no space in it for an angry teenager who still harbors some resentment against me. So Reddit, am I the jerk? I don't think that I'm responsible for the kid, but then again, he wouldn't exist without my egg edit since people are asking yes i do regret donating eggs i was young and i thought that i was giving a good gift to people this is why i am here asking the question because i do feel a sense of guilt for what they put this kid through he wouldn't exist if it weren't for me so he wouldn't be suffering edit two i was in his life as his parents friend until he was about six years old then i moved away and we saw much less of each other, and eventually lost touch. He does remember me from back then, but he was too young, and we never really formed an aunt-nephew kind of bond. Edit 3, my mother contacted him, but he didn't reply. She is reluctant to take him in because she realized that even though he's her biological grandson, neither she nor I know him well to be sure that he's safe. She lives alone, whereas I live with my husband and dogs, so she thinks it would be safer. She is willing to take him in later if she can get to know him a bit. All right, folks, what do you think? Not the jerk. I mean, it sounds like what happened here is when the parents had a kid that was biologically both of theirs, they kind of kicked the son to the side and yeah. were like, oh, go live with OP. You're not our problem anymore. Yeah, it sounds like that they were trying to build up to this from the very time when they found out that they had another kid and that's why they sued or tried to sue op they took them to court they tried to get some kind of payment out of her and again like this is why you always go through fertility clinics because mm -hmm. if you don't go through fertility clinics then it doesn't matter how well or nice or whatever somebody you think you know them 
they can change in time, right? Right, and I mean, it's very clear here that at least the mom, like, cause she suddenly, all of a sudden, became a stay-at-home mom when she had a bio kid. Like, she never really saw him as her son. He was just like a consolation prize. Yeah, and it's really gross, like that someone would do that to a, a poor child. Well, and she may even felt jealousy, mm -hmm. right? Because we put so much pressure on women to have children, mm -hmm. and that you're not a complete woman woman if you don't have children, which I mean, is not true. No, right? it's so disgusting and you shouldn't know, be pushed and we're all humans and we all have we can all make our own purpose in life mm -hmm. and that doesn't necessarily have to be the purpose of raising children but it can be too and there's nothing wrong with either of those decisions and i think that poor op is kind of stuck in uh living with other people's poor decisions yeah and that's the thing is like both of the parents in the situation are big jerks op hasn't done anything wrong uh, she made very clear what her role was going to be, that she was just donating the egg and that was the extent of it. She has all the legal paperwork. It's not her fault that these people decided to create this false narrative and expect it never to come back and bite them. Yeah, exactly. Like, to go and create this elaborate lie and try and paint OP as, uh, as a horrible mom who just abandoned him is just, that's not what friends do. No, no, they're clearly not friends. <laughs> But let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck. And Nate77 says, Reddit will believe anything, lol. Do you really think it's plausible that this person was one of about 2,000 single birth, freshly fertilized donor eggs IVF in 2005? And OP replies, I never said that I am in the US. You do know that IVF is done in other countries, yes? For that matter, do you realize that the USA is not the only country on this planet? <laughs> All right, folks, it is coffee time. Yes, today again, I was slacking on my duties last night, so we were recording this morning. But I have tea, so it's still tea time. Yes, Amber still has tea, so we still have tea time. Amber, lay the bo jovial Bob Stein joke <laughs> on me. What would you get if you crossed a werewolf and a snowball? Uh, you would get a very frozen werewolf who is very unhappy and probably will bite you much more frostbite so frostbite yeah i mean i pretty much got it <laughs> yeah all all but the exact phrase and i have coffee all right folks that's all the time we have for today thank you so much for watching happy special sunday amber we need some kind of moral advice and or guidance and please have it in 11 words or less let spider friends live. Let spider friends live. That's some good moral advice. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.